Okay, so getting back to the conversation about Silk Road, um, are there certain aspects of how these technologies are being utilized that um, kind of bode or, or can help us understand what they're going to look like going forward? And let me, let me just relate it back to one of the key principles we yeah. keep talking about is the idea that once these technologies are out, it's very, very difficult to pull them back, yeah. right? And, and there's often this slippery slope kind of race to the bottom perspective. So if you look at it from a kind of a corporate regulation standpoint, you know, companies were created and then later on, because people were seeking privacy, they would go off into these island nations, the Cayman Islands, the BVI, and then they would kind of outbid each other by trying to be more private and providing less information. And so again, while that attracted a lot of legitimate business, that also kind of increased the opportunity for abuse the system. Yeah, legal forms of abuse that yeah. that that you know cr have created problems right. you know globally now. So are we seeing this? Are there other examples of this that kind of predict what this is going to look like in the next iteration? Yeah. So I think you know we've already seen at least one iteration, you know, post Silk Road. You know, and one of the things we mentioned is that you know one of the kind of drivers of allowing Silk Road to kind of grow to the size it was was the use of uh, of Bitcoin as the medium of transaction, and we believe you know Bitcoin and uh, these kind of cryptocurrencies provide some level of anonymity, uh, though the, the whole the block itself, the, the ledger itself, is exposed, uh, and, and people can see the transactions that are happening. The actual users themselves have some level of anonymity, as opposed to you using your credit card and being able to immediately identify yeah. who you are. And you know maybe the next uh, well-known version of this is Monero, which is another cryptocurrency, an altcoin, an alternative uh, cryptocurrency that has uh, developed, has grown quite rapidly the last few years. And one of its key characteristics is, is that it's even more anonymous mm. than other cryptocurrencies. And, it's know, that slippery slope. Again, there's a potentially a slippery slope there. And, and we see this um, in what, perhaps one example, in an example of North Korea, which is reportedly is used Monero, maybe potentially mining Monero, to f circumvent transactions in the international financial system because they're subject to a variety of UN sanctions and uh, restrictions from uh, accessing traditional financial markets at the moment. And one way they're perhaps circumventing that or trying to get around those is the use of these kind of more secretive, uh, less uh, uh, accessible forms of cryptocurrency such as Monero. And you know, there's a lot of reports that they're using that as well. Okay, so Bitcoin was utilized within Silk Road primarily because it was largely anonymous. Yeah. But now we're seeing people leaving Bitcoin to go to something like Monero yeah. because it's even more anonymous, more anonymous, potentially. And you know now we're seeing governments getting in on the game. Yeah. And, and these are governments that, that oftentimes are, are maybe uh, within, within... Maybe less mainstream. Yeah, yeah. less mainstream, yeah. Um, oftentimes kind of tied to, say, terrorist mm -hmm. financing or other you yeah. know, kind of globally uh, sensitive political yeah. topics. Um, I, I find it somewhat ironic, yeah. first of all, that, that you would have the growth of this um, next iteration um, flowing out of this same principle of anonymity. But it does make sense. Yeah especially because when you have this, this race to the bottom yep. or slippery slope, that, that's the way that it goes. Yep. It, you know, it continues going down. Um, but, I, but I also think it's, it's interesting how when you look at the kind of moral underpinnings, why um, the founders of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular, why they created those currencies in the first place, it very much like Ulbricht and Silk Road was in and of itself kind of based on moral principles. Mm -hmm. The idea that you wanted to decentralize the marketplace. You, you wanted to um, democratize finance and in many ways allow people to bypass governments government. and, and, and current forms of, of currency, right? right. And, and so it's interesting that very much like the Silk Road, um, and it's not to say that all these uses are bad, certainly, um, but it is interesting how what was initially perceived as a moral, um, at least partially a, a, a moral conviction, is now, you know, in some ways being um, again, I don't want to say misused, but but now being utilized in ways that perhaps weren't right. initially anticipated. Sure, and so that, that's really interesting because I think if you talk to um, kind of visionaries who kind of have a real strong view about the role of cryptocurrencies, you know, it goes right to your point about you know they imagine many of them imagine a world where actually fiat currency is replaced mm. by cryptocurrency, and as part of that, the the you know, because fiat government is tied to, uh, or fiat currency is tied to governments and central banks, that that mechanism they feel is increasingly archaic. Yeah, and it, inherently oppressive. It could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, coined to a more uh, transparent system, 
uh, a more distributed system, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies is kind of, that's what they think the future will be. So there is, like you're right, there's a great deal of irony there because now not only do you have governments trying to regulate it more, they're, they're also getting involved in the use and production of it as mm. well, potentially. And, and, and we, you know, there are these uh, uh, kind of these minor examples of governments who have come out and said, hey, we may want to try to, you know, kind of issue our own kind of cryptocurrency. Mm. And so there, there's a great deal of irony there.